QuickBooks Desktop 2024 negative accounts receivable subscription unearned revenue model estimate sales order and receive payment forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our trust me i'm an accountant product line yeah it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file. We set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of QuickBooks desktop so we can focus in on the new feature of unearned revenue. Under the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar checked off open windows list checked off open windows open on the left under the company drop down we have the home page open and now we're going to open up reports by going to the reports drop down company and financial looking first at that balance sheet standard and we'll go to the customized reports up top then changing the range from 010127 tab 123127 tab and i'll go to the fonts and the numbers changing the font i'm going to bring it up to 14 as has been our custom okay yes and okay so there we have it let's then go to the reports drop down again this time the other major financial statement report we open every time that being the profit and loss standard uh the income statement the p l has changed the date range this time i'm going to bring the date range only from 010127 tab to 033127 and our new scenario will be running in the third month, March. And therefore, on the drop down, I want to see it month by month. So we did our first month in January, second month. And now we're going to do our third scenario in the third month. So we can kind of see a side by side comparison. Let's go to the customized reports, fonts and numbers and bring the font on up to 14, which would be nice so we could see what you're talking about because then the numbers will be bigger and my eyes aren't that good. So this is where we're going to be running our new scenario. Let's go back to the home tab now. So we've been thinking about the unearned revenue feature, QuickBooks desktop, especially the enterprise version, having the capacity to have an unearned revenue account. But we want to compare and contrast the, the different methods that are available to us. So we then first started with the normal process, making an estimate, making an invoice, or a sales order and then an invoice and then receiving the payment. Then we did the second uh, thought process of us having a system where we want to collect a deposit on a large sale like a custom surfboard, in which case we did an estimate, a sales order, collected then the money before we made the invoice, so that some money at least, so that we can make a customer deposit or unearned revenue. Then we purchased the inventory and then we made the invoice and the invoice netted out against the prepayment resulting in a negative AR for a short period of time. This time we're gonna do a similar process but pretend instead of having an inventory sale that we have a subscription model, the classic kind of subscription model being a magazine company or a newspaper, right? So they you pay in advance for like a year's subscription and then they, they throw the newspaper through your window uh, every every week or something and so you pay for the so you're basically paying some kid to throw stuff at your house right and I, I get stuff thrown at my house I don't need to pay for it so I stop the paper but now I buy you can buy other online stuff as well uh, and get a subscription model for software so that's quite common as well so let's think about this from a subscription model we will first do the unearned revenue method and then we're going to be comparing and contrasting the the new method in the next section uh for for these two uh scenarios so we're gonna we're gonna imagine on the subscription model we still could make an estimate 
we might not need to do that because the subscription is going to be pretty much standard, right? So they're going to, it's not like you have a custom job that is happening. So it's probably the case uh, that you would, that, that you would then uh, go to the invoice and invoice someone as they pay you. But the problem is when you do that, if you were just to invoice someone when they pay you, then you're recording the revenue because the invoice is going to be recording the revenue before you actually receive the payment. So that's or before you actually do the work. So that's from a from a bookkeeping standpoint, that's not exactly uh, the way we're supposed to do it. We should we should first be recording it as unearned revenue. Uh, and then when we do the work, meaning we give the paper or the application, that's when we uh, record the revenue. So how can we set that process up? Well, we could start by saying, I'm going to record the receive payment, which in this method will make a negative accounts receivable. And then we'll match it out to the invoices that, that we can basically create on a periodic basis, monthly possibly. Uh, uh, and that will, that will match out the negative AR uh, and record the revenue as we earn it. So, but we'll, we'll do this full process and make the estimate and the sales order form just so we can see it in a similar way as we did before. So I'm going to make an estimate. I'm going to say this is going to be negative AR just so I can name the method. Let's, let's actually label it number three, negative AR and this subscription, subscription, uh, and this is going to be for the customer. That's a weird customer name, but I'm doing that just so we can make sure that we differentiate the three methods or scenarios we have run thus far. Quick add. I'm going to say this happens on 030127. So we'll have just that happening on the income statement. And then the item, I'm going to make the same item. It's going to be three negative AR customer. And I'll just call it item at the end of it, tab. I'm going to say uh, yes. We didn't have that, so I'm going to add it. And this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's a subscription model, so I don't need inventory. However, uh, sometimes it might be useful for us to record each of the month payments uh, separately. So if I charge it uh, similar to what we did before, where, where we charged $175. So let's say $175 divided by five. So let's imagine that we're going to collect, we're going to, we're going to do a five month subscription, which is kind of weird. You'd probably be doing a six month subscription or 12 months, but let's say it's a five month subscription. And then I'm going to, I'm going to record a separate item for each month. Right. Uh, and then, and so then we can collect $35 each. So hopefully that'll make sense once we start doing this. So I'm going to say negative AR subscription, uh, item, let's just say customer, uh, na name of item, not customer. Let's just say subscription one. So I'm going to copy that. That's going to be the item. That's going to be the name of the service item. And then uh, we're going to say that the amount for it is going to be $35. $35. There's the description for the one. Is it subject to uh, the sales tax? Yeah, let's keep it subject to sales tax. And then on the income account, I'm going to call it the same thing negative AR subscription one, we'll just subscription, let's keep it at that. And I'll say, okay, tab setup. Let's actually put an income before it. So I'll say income, and then it's negative AR subscription. And it's an income type of account. Okay. And then save it. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to do that like six times now. So I'm going to copy the same thing down here, but I'm going to put a two at the end of it. So it's going to be a two tab. And we're going to say, okay, now same thing, except it has a two next to it. It's still going to be now this with a two. I'll copy that so I can and then this is going to be 35 again. And then it's going to be tax and then it's going to be negative AR. The account is going to be what did I call it? Uh, three. I should have put an income, dang it, income, income negative AR subscription. That's what I called it, right? Income, uh, I put a three in front of it, income negative AR subscription. Okay, I think I've got that right. All right, so I'm gonna say, okay. So there's another one, same thing, but I'm just mapping out 
each month. So now I'm going to say this will be three tab. And I should say month three. So month number three is what that stands for. So now I'm going to tab through this same thing. Month number three, it's for $35, not 345, but 35. And this is three negative AR subscription income account. Okay. And then two more times. So this is going to be a four. I'll copy that. Duh, duh. Yes. And tab, 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 tab. And this will be a f that 35 taxed three negative AR subscription. Duh, duh. So I'm going to say, okay. And then uno vase mas one more time. If you please tab. Yes. Duh, 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 duh. And then, okay. And then this is going to be 35. And then I'm going to say that this is going to be uh, three and there's my income and we'll say, okay. So the point is it comes out to that same 188.56 uh, when it's said and done after we have the tax, which is the same as our, you know, prior practice problems that we were, uh, that we were working with, with the total AR. This is just the estimate though. So nothing is going to be recorded uh, at this point in time. So I'm going to, in my Excel worksheet, I can copy over just the same estimate. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening here in terms of recording it to the financial statement. So let's save it and close it. Estimate recorded. I can track the estimates as we've seen before by going to the customer dropdown, customer center, and here's our new customer making sure that all dates are seen because we're working in the future and there is our estimate now the next thing that would happen if i go back to my home page so now we, we've got the estimate we can create a sales order from it that would just be locking in the estimate so i'm going to say okay let's say that they lock in the estimate let's go into the estimate i'm going to create the sales order from it and the estimate has been copied to the sales order. So if you wish, you can edit the sales order. Okay, sounds good. So now we have our sales order. And let's make this as of 0302. Let's just to put a different date and uh, 27. Tab, 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 tab. Everything else looks good. Same uh, items down below. Nothing's being recorded. We're just basically locking in that they have accepted the estimate and now we've recorded the sales order. Uh, we still haven't collected any money and we still have not uh, uh, done, any, uh, done any work. So there's the sales order. So just like we saw before, from a journal entry standpoint, there's no actual financial statement transaction for the sales order. So if I go back to the home tab, so now we've did the estimate, we got the sales order. We don't have to go and purchase anything because we're not purchasing a custom product from like a vendor this time. So the next thing that would happen uh, is we would receive the payment. Now, in this case, we're receiving the payment. I'm going to jump over here, but we're not receiving the payment for, uh, for, for the, we're not receiving the payment for a deposit so that we can buy that we're receiving all of the payment basically up front at this point from the subscription model. So we're going to get paid for five months up front and we charged five months was 35 each. So 35 uh, times the times the uh, five times five was 175. And then we had the sales tax on top of that. That's what we're going to basically receive up front. And so we're going to say uh, and notice you may or may not have to deal with the sales tax on a subscription model, but that'll make it more complicated. So we'll do that if I go back to my customer center. So now I'm going to say that we have a payment that we're going to receive. I'm just going to note the amount here, which is going to be 188.56, 188.56. And I'm going to record a received payment. So let's say we could do it here or let's go to the home tab just to see it here. Now we're jumping, we're skipping the invoice, going to the received payment. So I'm going to say the customer is negative. AR is at three negative AR. And then it's going to be for 188.56 that we're going to collect 
let's say the date was an 030327, let's say, and there's nothing to match it out to down here. That's the point, nothing to match it out here because we don't have an invoice. What's this gonna do? It's gonna create a negative accounts receivable, which is gonna be incorrect at least until we match it out to the, to the invoices that we will make in the future, which we'll make on a monthly basis this time. So I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller. If I was to see that in terms of journal entries, if we go over to uh, Excel here, we could say, okay, what happened now? We've got now, we don't have a purchase order or anything like that. Uh, instead, we're receiving uh, a sales receipt. So the sales receipt is the next one that happens and we're gonna get cash. I'm just gonna put into cash from a debits and credit standpoint. The other side's gonna be going into now uh, negative receivable, which is not exactly right. This is where the incorrectness kind of happens. 188.56, which we saw from the estimate. So I'm gonna go up top and say, okay, cash now is going up and accounts receivable is the other side. Revenue is not being recorded. At this time, we didn't enter the invoice because we haven't earned it yet. We recorded the receive payment first. So that's where we stand at this point. If I record this, let's check it out. Let's save it and close it and say, uh, it says a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. You can click print the credit memo to save the transaction. Uh, you can click okay to save the transactions and so on. We're gonna save it, it'll keep the credit. So now there's a credit to the account. I'm gonna zoom back in again. And so, so now if I go to my customer balance, I could see that uh, payment that has been put in place here, it not being matched yet to any invoice, but it's easy to track internally. Let's go to my balance sheet now and check it out here. We're gonna end up with a negative accounts receivable. So if I go into my AR, now I've got this negative accounts receivable in uh, March. So there it is again. And so I'm gonna say, okay. And then the other side's going into undeposited uh, funds, which is my cash account, undeposited funds. And then in my sub ledger, reports drop down for the accounts receivable. I'm gonna go down to uh, uh, inventory. Let's go into the inventory, not inventory. What am I talking about? Customers and receivables, customers and receivable customer balance detail. I've been, I need to st stop for the day here. Let's customize the report and let's bring it up to 12. Okay. So, so now we've got this negative accounts receivable. So again, not exactly correct at this point. It should be a, 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 in, in a liability account, but easy to see in the sub ledger because now if I add up the whole sub ledger, comes out to uh, 92.8.19.37, which ties out to what's on the balance sheet. And hopefully 92.8.19.37. And we have one sub ledger tying that out. That's the benefit of it. And then of course, if it becomes a problem for re reporting purposes, you might do an adjusting entry at the end of the year but it's only a timing difference because when we actually receive uh, that or enter the invoice, it should it should start to to uh, cancel out would be the would be the the idea, right? So if I go back to my customer center here, what we have now is this payment that we have received, and uh, and then we have well we had the estimate, we had the sales order, and then we have the payment. Uh, that has been received. We'll stop here at this point. If I go back to the home page, next time what we would expect to happen in this model would be that as time passes, we're gonna say that we delivered the newspaper. We had the kid throw the newspaper right through every window uh, on the house. And there's only four windows that face the street and all of them were broken within a week. And so <laughs> it was, so we said, so we, and then, and then we earned our profit. We earned our revenue by doing that. So then we can enter the invoice, which will increase the, the revenue as we earn it. And it'll decrease, uh, the accounts receivable, uh, would be the general idea. And we can create the invoice. Now, if I go into the customer, uh, the, the, the customer center, we can create it from the sales order. 
uh, or the estimate. And notice now we can we can when we pull it into the invoice, we can populate it hopefully <laughs> by each one of these different months. That's why we put it in there one by one, so we can now pull in each month as uh, the month as the months pass. So that's going to be the idea. And so we'll continue on with that next time.